what's up everybody sorry for the uh, unsteady camera but I don't know it makes it kind of fun like it's like a GoPro view but uh I got a question because I make so many videos like making fun of all right ideas and all right idiots I think the question is what would make a white advocacy group legitimate to me, or what would make a pro-white group legitimate, um, that's kind of a subjective thing, but I kind of think more along the lines of what would be effective, what would be good strategy, well, first off, I mean, I don't get involved in anything pro-white just because it's been so tainted and so horrible, uh, some of the groups involved. You know, if you look at, like, some of the people that were involved with Charlottesville, yeah, I wouldn't want any part of that. But if you're asking me what what I would do, which and I, I definitely think this would be much more effective than anything National Justice or any of these other idiots are doing, is uh, much of it is focused on hating other people, right? like hating Jews, hating minorities, muds, or whatever terminology that these idiots are using. And this whole lost cause myth of World War II, which carries echoes of the lost cause of the Civil War. You know, we've actually been lied to about World War II and the good guys lost and all that nonsense. I mean, I just wouldn't allow that in a group at all. I just think it's totally toxic. Um, I think I think people do it largely for attention and to break taboos. I mean, that's what that's what Enoch and Stryker do it for. They do it because it's a motive. It gets a reaction out of people. It gets people riled up. Charlottesville type people, you know, like this last stand of the this mythical white stand last stand of the white people, the lost cause, whatever, uh, I certainly wouldn't allow any of that bullshit, or any World War II revisionism, Holocaust denial, you can just see how that's totally toxic, and basically guarantees that your movement or group is going to lose, but I would just focus on real in-your-face issues, for example, what Tucker Carlson talks about and things like him. Uh, the racial sensitivity training, uh, whatever that thing is called. It's like, I forget the name of it. Uh, you know, it started at Harvard. It's like radical racial conditioning. I don't know. I forget the name of it. Um, Anything that's criticizing white people as a whole, or white people as a group, or whiteness, I would just say like this: this is as bad as criticizing any any other group of people. It shouldn't happen. And I think some of the ideas of focusing on maybe focusing on some of the inequalities that exist in society. Certain people are overrepresented at top universities. They're overrepresented um, as CEOs. Or even in the crime statistics, right? There's racial discrepancies. There's sexual discrepancies, right? Does anyone think it's like some kind of crazy injustice that 95% of murderers are men or more? 95% of the people arrested for murder are men. 95% of the people killed by police are men. Uh, Do we think it's because the police are sexist? Or do we think because uh, men have too much testosterone and are idiots and get themselves killed by the police. You know what I mean? It's kind of low-hanging fruit. People are going to say, oh, it's not extreme enough. But I think it would be more effective. Uh, Things like what Tucker Carlson is trying to draw attention to. Ridiculous stuff that is ridiculous to people and gets a reaction out of people. That's going to be much more effective than than this business of trying to destroy the Holocaust narrative, which is never going to fucking happen. 
it might be real to a small group of people, you know, that's like, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna destroy the Holocaust narrative, and we're gonna change the World War II narrative, and, um, people are gonna embrace racism, and we're gonna create ethno states and, like, kick out all the bad people, the Jews and the minorities, um, that's just not gonna work, uh, it, it, it might make for some cool rallies with Enoch and Stryker and David Duke or some Charlottesville type events, but, uh, that's definitely, I mean, the funny part is that does more, that's more harmful to white people than probably anything. They're just delegitimizing themselves and totally destroying the reputation of anything pro-white or anything like that, you know what I mean? So, that's the large and short of it. That's kind of like a, all the other details would be would fall under that, I think. But that's largely the direction I would go in. Um, this, the, this type of struggle happened at American Renaissance, right? It was Ian Jobling was the guy that was like, hey, I want to talk about HBD and racial differences and uh, discrimination against white people. Well, how are we going to do that with these fucking stormfront idiots here that are total, totally ruining every progr any progress we have? And um, he wasn't happy with American Renaissance, so he went somewhere else. And uh, he just grew disenfranchised with white advocacy. Not that he didn't believe in some parts of it, but he just thought it was so toxic and ruined by these toxic elements that he just left it all together and um seeing all right and white nationalist ideas and people I mean I wouldn't want anything to do with it uh that's why I don't identify as a white advocate or that's why most of my videos are mocking it right uh just because I find it interesting and many of the ideas are pretty stupid and toxic. So, I don't know, I, I just said this off the cuff, so I probably didn't say anything, everything I wanted to say, but um, that's the large and short of it. You know, focusing, uh, focus on protecting white people like other groups do, like other minority groups do. You know, when the Asian Defamation League or whatever, they protect it when, uh, Asians are discriminated against at Harvard or when they're made fun of too much in some movie, they'll make a statement and say, you know, this isn't right. Uh, they don't say, you know, the fucking Jews in Hollywood uh, are fucking parasites and we need to get rid of them. Uh, how do you think that would end if they did that? They'd be, there's a couple of minority advocacy groups that do things like that along those lines, maybe like Nation of Islam black Hebrew Israelites, but everyone knows they're morons. But by and large, minority groups don't attack other groups. They they try to protect their reputation and advocate positively for their group. So, but unfortunately, pretty much every white organization uh, at least ends up with some people that break that rule constantly. So some would say, oh, we, we can't advocate because... Uh, certain people and have pathologized, you know, any any group of white people advocating for themselves. And while I agree with that to a certain extent, uh, I would say that reputation is mostly earned uh, by white advocates being fucking idiots and attacking other people and uh, embracing, you know, really reactionary, crazy ideas at worst ideas out of the Third Reich and uh, spreading ridiculous conspiracy theories. I would focus on the low-hanging group, uh, the low-hanging fruit, and try to build a reputation there. Rebuild. Uh, well, I don't know if you would say rebuilding because it was never really built well initially, but uh, 
re rebuilding a reputation. But of course, all the critics will say, no, that's optics cucking. We have to go full 1488. Otherwise, it's not going to work. We have to destroy the Holocaust narrative and then wage war against the Jews and then other people and take power. I mean, good luck with that. I'll, I'll enjoy watching idiots tr try to do that. Uh, you know, they'll be doing that indefinitely, saying... They complain about how put upon they are and how power... They're unjustly kept out of power by the powers that be. But one day, one day we're going to rise up for the white man and take everything back. They're saying that now. They'll be saying that in five years. They'll be saying that in 30 years. You know, this is the lost cause, the myth of the coming revolution. I also wouldn't espouse anything promoting eth ethnostates. I think that's crazy. I mean, I'm against that approach in the U.S. anyway. Uh, I think it... Stay away from wedge issues like that. They're just going to divide people. You know what I mean? Uh, anyway, that's the, long, that's the long and short of it, so... I'm sure this video will get some hate, but it wouldn't be fun if it didn't, so everyone have a good day.